All right, thank you for joining me at Freelancer School. I am Mike Volkin, and today we have a special guest with us, Nathan Hirsch, who is an entrepreneur and expert in remote hiring and e-commerce, and he is the co-founder and CEO of FreeUp.com, which we will certainly talk about. Uh, FreeUp is a marketplace that connects businesses with pre-vetted freelancers in e-commerce, digital marketing, and a lot of other different industries. Uh, he has sold over 30 million online and regularly appears on leading uh, business podcasts from all over the world. And now he can add freelancer school to his repertoire. Welcome, Nathan, to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to, to talk freelancing, talk business, talk entrepreneurship, scaling. It's all, it's all what I love. Cool. All of the above. We'll talk about all that. Um, I read an, an article featured about you on uh, Thrive Global uh, where you mentioned you were an introvert. And I wanted to ask you, because a lot of freelancers are introverts, including myself, uh, do you think there's an advantage to being an introvert and an entrepreneur? So it's funny. I feel like if you see me on podcasts or talking on stage or networking or talking to clients, I, I can be the most outgoing person. But bottom line, I definitely don't get energy from talking to other people. By the time I'm done at a conference, I'm done with a podcast, I'm tired. I need some Nate time to, to really refresh and rejuvenate. And I do think it helps freelancers as long as they can do make the sales calls, do the interviews well, not come across socially awkward or anything that would turn off a client. There's some benefit to be able to block everything else out and, and focus on what you want to do, what you're good at, at scaling it and growing your business. And I feel like being an introvert allows you to do that where sometimes being an extrovert and some people I know who are really talented salespeople or they're super outgoing, they want to be around other people at all times and they're not able to take a step back and, and go be by themselves and get stuff done, which is part of the battle of being an entrepreneur. Right. Absolutely. And at what point did you decide you wanted to work for yourself? So my parents were both teachers growing up and I, I got into the mentality that I was going to go to school, get a real job, work for 30 years, retire. And, and that's what they do. I mean, they, they're yeah. retired now. They're traveling the world. They're living life. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's always not what I really wanted. Um, so I started off that way. My parents made me get these internships. I was working 40, 50 hours a week while all my friends were, were outside enjoying the summer. And I learned sales. I learned marketing. I learned customer service and business. And I also learned I just hated working for other people. So I was watching the clock every day. I kind of hate authority, having to follow people's directions all the time. I, I, I knew I was going to be miserable in any type of job that required me to report to someone else. So when I got to college, I started hustling, and, and I really wanted to do everything possible to avoid having to get a real job when I graduated. Okay, so it was, it was after college at some point, and then you just you never really had a corporate job, or just you go straight into entrepreneurship? Yeah, right before college is when I had the internships and I realized that when I got to college, I, I started a textbook business and um, I, I created a little referral program. I was competing with my school bookstore and I eventually got a, a cease and desist letter from my college. So that was my first glimpse into being an entrepreneur and, and I was addicted from there. I had sold some books on Amazon. I thought it was so cool. I could have this 24 seven storefront and I just had to figure out what products I wanted to sell. So I started experimenting with outdoor products, home goods, uh, video games, computers, like typical college guy stuff that I was familiar with. And I just failed over and over and over. And the only thing I get to sell were these books. And I didn't want to get out of school because my parents were teachers and that wouldn't have gone over well. So <laughs> I, I kept looking and looking and finally I came across the baby product industry. So I started drop shipping baby products on Amazon. I got in at, at a great time. My business started scaling. If you can imagine me as a 20 year old single college guy selling millions of dollars of baby products on Amazon. That was me. And I, by the time I, I got to graduate, I really had a tough decision to make. I had this degree behind me that I've never really used, but I, at the time I, I had it and I worked hard for it. And then I had this business that was growing and doing well. And I remember like a week before college ended, I, I still I had job offers. I had this business. I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. And I sat down with my aunt or I had a phone call with my aunt who's an entrepreneur and she kind of told me all the benefits and that I should follow what I want to do and that there's always going to be more jobs that I can get later on. And I went the entrepreneurial route and never looked back. I've never had a real job after college. That's awesome. So what were your challenges when you were first starting out being an entrepreneur? What, could, what tips can you give our audience that maybe they can avoid doing? <laughs> Yeah, my, most of my challenges were around hiring, which is why I built the free up marketplace to begin yeah. with. I mean, you have to remember, I was 2021. 20, I knew nothing about hiring. I knew nothing about management or leadership. And one of my managers at the only internship or the internship that I worked at the longest, he was a terrible manager. He got stuff done, but 
people hated him. He was micromanaging. He was yelling at people. And that was the only management style I know. I knew. So I, going from someone who was already too young to hire people to someone who had no managerial experience to someone who really came across as a really bad manager that no one wanted to work for, hiring was a struggle. And I quickly gave up hiring people in person. I went to the remote hiring world, the Upworks, the Fivers, and it was okay. I found some people that were still with me today, but I always wanted something better, something faster. So I, I built my own platform, free up to really address those concerns. But the biggest lesson was you can't just hire people for skill. So many times I hired people that had great references. They, um, they had a great resume. They had five-star reviews. They had five years experience, whatever it was. And it blew up in my face. And I realized that skill is just one part of the equation. For, for skill, you don't really care if they're a 10 out of 10 or a 5 out of 10. What you care about is that they're honest about what they can and cannot do and that they're priced accordingly. But attitude and communication are, are a big part as well. You want people that are passionate about what they do, not just in it for the money. You want people who don't get aggressive that so, when something doesn't go their way. People can take feedback without taking it personally. And then that communication is everything. I mean, if, if I hire you and you have a great attitude and a great skill set and you and I can't communicate, nothing else really matters. So spending time finding people who can communicate at a high level, whether that's hitting due dates, getting on the same page, responding within a business day is so important. And you've got to find that trifecta when you hire people. That's true. That's a really good point. And that's a good lead into to free up. Tell me a little bit about free up. And, and uh, I guess we got a glimpse of why you started it, but tell me a little bit about the free up and the capabilities of maybe how it's different than Upwork or Fiverr, all those typical platforms out there. Yeah, so we get thousands of applicants every week. These are virtual assistants, freelancers, agencies from all over the world, five to 100 plus per hour, US, non-US, over 100 skill sets. And we vet them for skill, attitude, and communication. Just like I talked about before, top 1% get on our platform. For clients, they create an account in seconds. They put in a request whenever they want someone. They don't have to browse. They don't have to go through 50 people. We fill that request within a business day with one person. If they want more, they can say 73, 75, whatever that number is, we're happy to honor it. But then they can quickly interview them and get started. It saves them a ton of time. And then the back end, we have 24-7 support on both the client side and the freelancer side in case either side has even the smallest issue and a no turnover guarantee where people on our platform rarely quit. But if they do, we cover replacement costs and get them a new person right away. Wow. So that, that's really the four ways that we're different. And I tried to take everything from other platforms that I like and, and change yeah. everything that I didn't like. Yeah, that's wow. That sounds like a pretty cool system. So why do you cap it off at $100 an hour? Yeah, so there's not really a cap. The, the freelancers set their own rates. Um, when we started free up, we eventually we originally started with VA. So it was like five to 25 was our, our ballpark range. And then we went from five to 50 and then we added US and then we went to five to 75 and then five to 100. We didn't want to go from five to 50 to five to 500 and cross our fingers and hope nothing goes wrong. So yeah. we're kind of inching up that ballpark, but we've got freelancers on our platform that charge more than hundred bucks an hour. You can charge fixed prices. I mean, we don't limit that or restrict that or set their rates in any way. Yeah. Wow, that's good. So you certainly know a lot of different freelancers. Can you give our freelance audience some tips on maybe how they can scale faster than the, than the other freelancers who aren't lucky enough to be listening to this interview? Yeah. So you have to look at yourself as a business. That is the key to being a freelancer. And if you're a business, let's say you're a graphic designer, you're not just doing graphic design. You have to do the sales, the marketing, the lead generation. You need to have a website. You need to have customer service and, and a process for handling disputes. You got to have the, the billing and the tax and the finance stuff down. So you got to look at yourself as all parts of the business and be working on all parts of those business every day. Focus on those systems, focus on those processes, and focus on the big picture. I see so many freelancers that they get into an argument with a client over like $25, and instead of just making it right and moving on and, and continuing to work with that client and making more money or getting referrals from that client, they blow up the relationship for, for no reason. So you have to be customer centric focused. You have to understand that not every client is going to be rainbows and butterflies. It's just not how real life works, but you have to be the bigger person, the bigger man, the bigger woman, the person who resolves things quickly and doesn't let things drag out and escalate. And to me, if you're doing those things, you're going to have way more success than the freelancer who's only focused on graphic design, who can't solve issues, who can only work with really good, nice clients. Those people only go so far. Yeah, that's a good point. And it would, is it realistic for a client, I'm sorry, for a freelancer to think that they should be working eight, eight hours a day on client work? Because I, I tell people, you know, freelancers ultimately should be working four to five hours a day, and the other, 
the other hour should be going toward all those things you mentioned, like prospecting, you know, finding new clients, doing your books, or uh, managing other freelancers to help help with client management, project management in some way, working on your business, basically. So is that what you would recommend, or do you, do you recommend something else? Definitely. And I would even go a step further as you grow. I mean, you can hire a virtual assistant. You can hire freelancers yourself to do projects, create your logo, your website, whatever it is. You can partner or build a Rolodex of white label partners who can add to upsells of your service and get work done for you at a high level that, yeah. um, that, that, that you can't necessarily do as long as you're transparent with your client what's going on. So yeah. there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. I think you're, you're absolutely right. I, I don't know what the exact perfect number is, but yeah. you're doing Probably. Eight hours a day of just the the work, you're missing out on everything else. For sure. So, do you remember what your first hire was? What position? <laughs> so, my first hire, I I posted. Okay, so I'm making money for the first time. I'm 20 years old. I have this baby product Amazon business, and I meet with an accountant. And the first question he asked me is, "When are you going to hire your first person?" And I kind of shrugged him off. I was like, "Why is it? Why would I do that? That's money out of my pocket. They're going to steal yeah. my ideas. They're going to hurt my business." Pretty yeah. standard young entrepreneurial stuff. And he just laughed in my face and he said, you're going to learn this lesson on your own. Well, sure enough, my first busy season comes around. The fourth quarter, I get destroyed. I'm doing everything. I'm answering every email, filling every order. My social life plummets. My grades go down. I'm stressed out of my mind. And I work my butt off for eight weeks just to survive, just to keep this business in check. And when I get to January, I think to myself, man, I, I can never let that happen again. I need to hire someone right now. So I'm 20. I know nothing about hiring. I post a job on Facebook. This guy in my business law class shoots me a message, says, hey, I don't know what you do, but, um, <laughs> but I need a job. And I just hire him. I don't even interview him. And he ends up being an amazing hire. He's hardworking. He's smart. He makes my job easier. And he's my business partner today with FreeUp. We've been working together. Oh, yeah. for really? That's <laughs> crazy. I just hit the jackpot right from the beginning. And I mean, after that, I, I, I'm this punk 20 year old who thinks, man, hiring is easy. You post a job, someone shows up, you make more money. And I just proceed to make a lot of bad hires after that. So they weren't all like that, but I did get lucky with the first hire. Do you think there's any, any correlation between, you, you talk about like not hiring on skill sets and that was your first hire and you hit the jackpot. Do you think there's any correlation between that luckiness you got on your first hire to the reason why you started free up and the whole concept behind not hiring for particular skills? Is there any correlation there? Maybe, maybe subconsciously. Yeah, maybe. I mean, like I have some amazing hires, and my team bills me twelve hundred hours a week. I mean, I couldn't work twelve hundred hours a week if I wanted to. So, I mean, there's a lot of really awesome people, and I think one thing that I, I realized after making that hire is how how good A players make you look. When you surround yourself with A players, like you grow a brand, you grow a business, you you make more money. Like that is the key. And when you surround yourself with B, C, D, F players. It kills you. It crushes you. It's demotivating. It sets you going in circles. So yeah. for me, like that, that was the main point of free up is trying to surround people with A players at all times so that they can pursue their business, their dreams, their passion, whatever that is. Yeah, I like that. So all these freelancers listening, if they're in, uh, let's see, what go to freeup.com and what's the industries? Digital marketing. What else do you get besides VA and digital marketing? What what else we're missing? Yeah, I mean, we have e-commerce, we have real estate agents. I mean, from an advertising standpoint, we go after e-commerce and marketing clients. Okay. The cool thing about the marketing industry is it kind of trickles into everything else. So we get software companies, real estate agents, everything else. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, we don't do anything like against terms of use or fake reviews or anything like that. But yeah. if you're a graphic designer, a bookkeeper, a writer, an Amazon expert, uh, uh, whatever it is, I mean, we have clients for you on our platform. Nice. And is it, it's all hourly based, right? No, no, the freelancers, they set their own rates. They can decide if they want to do fixed price or hourly. I mean, yeah. the pure flexibility to run their business however they want. Very cool. All right. Well, I mean, where else can our listeners find you besides at freeup.com? Yeah, so if you go to freeup.com at the top, um, they're right on the site you can apply and, and make sure. Um, yeah, <laughs> let me start over. We've got, if you're a client and you're listening, my calendar at the top. My calendar is for client calls. If you're a freelancer or a service provider, you can apply right on the website. You can follow me on social media channels, Real Nate Hirsch on Instagram, on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'm probably the, one of the easiest people to contact. But if you're looking to offer services, I kind of stay away from that team. I let them do their job. They, they are awesome. We call them our freelancer success team. And you can apply right on the website or email freelancers at freeup.com. Very cool, Nathan. Lots of great stuff going on, man. I wish you the best of luck. Let's keep in touch. Same, man. Have a great rest of the day. Talk to you later. Bye.